on tackling corruption through aid, to, through aid and budget transparency. And um, allow me first to introduce the speakers. The, His Excellency Nana Nene, Deputy Minister of Finance, South Africa, in the middle. Um, His Excellency Mr. Ralph Joma, Deputy Minister, Minister of Finance, Malawi. And Mr. Francesco Di Simone, Senior Policy Director, uh, International Development for Transparency International. Now, we're here this week, all of us together, with many other representatives from member states, civil society, parliament, private sector, to talk about international development cooperation. Key issues, we've just come out of Rio, we're looking at sustainable <coughs> human development, but also how development cooperation can play a key role. Now, obviously, we know that aid needs to be managed effectively, resources needs to be channeled efficiently, and also transparency. transparently. Transparency and accountability have been key themes this week at the Development Cooperation Forum because it's a means to ensure acceptability is a key component of democratic governance. And as a result, we've put together this panel and these distinguished speakers are, are very willing to share with us their views on aid, budget transparency, how decisions could be made, how cooperation through development providers as well as recipients, program countries, and all other actors can debate and influence the way forward when we're looking at effective decision making to improve people's lives in a very meaningful way. So allow me to go with my first question to the, His Excellency the Deputy Minister of Finance of Malawi. And knowing that transparency is a key issue and part of governance, donors as you know have invested increasing resources in strengthening processes to aim and enhance budget transparency in many developing countries. The 2008 Open Budget Index report finds <coughs> that aid dependency and budget transparency seem to be inversely correlated. Other articles on budget transparency in aid dependent countries are concerned with the poor adaptation of budget transparency information and practices at a local level and with a limited emphasis from donors to improve public access to budget information. From your experience and in your current role, what would you see are the main challenges to enhance budget transparency in Malawi, knowing that you're very committed to do so? Over to you, sir. Thank you very much. Um, uh, first of all, I want to underscore the importance of transparency. And uh, in my perspective, I believe that uh, transparency is very broad. Uh, I think it uh, encompasses uh, the issue of accountability, ancillability, and even enforceability. Uh, now, in, in, in this aspect, in this context of uh, uh, aid flows and aid management uh, and uh, the uh, uh, transparency in as far as budgeting is concerned, uh, I would like to say that uh, uh, the transparency in this case could be defined as uh, perhaps the whole uh, revelation of the uh, information as regarding to uh, the contracting uh, up to the management mm -hmm. of uh, uh, the aid uh, resources uh, and that is to say you have to reveal the sources uh, the reason why uh, you have uh, sourced that uh, those funds um, and the, uh, actually the amounts uh, the, all the conditionalities around that, uh, including even the impact uh, on the lives of the people. Because, yes. you know, at the end of the day, people have to buy in, people have to be convinced. And uh, um, uh, usually people would look for uh, don donations or aid that uh, would work to uh, reduce uh, uh, poverty in the, long, in the short term to medium term. But in the long term, uh, they look for resources that would actually help the recipient country uh, to graduate uh, from donor dependency. Now, uh, the challenges that are actually uh, hampering the, uh, this issue of transparency at the moment, uh, in, as far as budgeting is concerned, is to do with probably number one uh, issues to do with uh, the complexity of yeah. budget documents. Yeah. Um, you know that uh, very few people can understand budget documents. Uh, and uh, because of that, it is not very easy, you know, to like uh, uh, make the information accessible to each one and be able to understood uh, in a layman's uh, form. Uh, the other thing is uh, perhaps the voluminousness of the budget themselves. Uh, if you want, uh, like, to uh, put more information. Uh, in order to be more transparent, then you are making it more voluminous and more discouraging for people to use Can it. Can I ask you a question here? You yeah. talk about complexity, volume, and in a way the density of the information. If you could change something right now to enhance transparency from a perspective of mutual accountability of recipient and development provider, what would you do? What are you looking to change? Uh, we are looking to change perhaps uh, uh, the whole 
process of uh, budgeting. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe people should be involved right from the beginning, mm -hmm. the formulation up to the implementation stage. Because if you just bring the budgets like in Parliament and uh, give it to people to interpret them, uh, it becomes very difficult it's for because the even the time, yeah, yeah, even the time that they are given to interpret these uh, uh, documents is not enough. But if you uh, take people on board right from the beginning, the formulation of the budgets, and they are part of the process. Uh, the, pro the one the, uh, the time will be long enough for people to understand and the, uh, to, uh, to, to to be involved, and then they can easily uh, probably know what is involved in the in the, in the budgeting. So what I was um, what I was saying there is that um, uh, what the other challenge is that of voluminousness, but the other challenge is to do with the uh, lack of information uh, at, yeah. a pro at appropriate time, because sometimes by the time you are formulating. Uh, up to the completion of the formulation of the budget, you do not have all the information that you may need to include in the budget. For example, information relating to aid. So that information uh, will come at a later stage and it will be channeled, that, those funds will be channeled off the budget and people will not know uh, wh what sort of resources. Can I the, uh, link yes. your point to, uh, to bring your, your, your very substantive response also to, the, to His Excellency, the Minister of uh, of uh, Deputy Minister of Finance, the Deputy Minister of Finance of South Africa, and South Africa uh, now often referenced to be an emerging economy. You are a development provider. In the past, you've been a recipient of assistance. When it comes to you, when you hear a country such as Malawi speak about volume, complexity, how would you deal with the transparency issue around the cooperation you provide? How do you want to provide it to your partner countries where you implement programs? Uh, and also, how do you balance the need from South Africa's taxpayers and its citizens to know that they feel their money is well spent? Uh, how are you dealing with that uh, very current topical issue and how can you guide us? Well, um, <coughs> again, also just to reiterate that we are supportive of the transparency and uh, um, you know, the availability of information is not only to the South African citizens, as you would know that we actually do everything in our power to um, respond to the needs of the donor of the donor countries, and I think it is the same level of um, uh, <coughs> commitment that we require to the citizens of um, the recipient uh, countries. But as we have correctly pointed out, that in South Africa we also find ourselves both as recipients but also as donors. Mm. And um, what is important is uh, to also ensure that the impact. Yeah. of that is also communicated to people but you need to empower the citizenry yeah. um, availability of information is not enough if the citizens themselves are not empowered to be able to access that information accessibility means that you um, uh, disseminate information through the proper, proper channels yeah. that you disseminate uh, um, information that people will understand in their language not only in the language uh, but also in the you know, as uh, yeah. my colleague has said, in a, in a manner that is understandable to the, uh, to the person in, um, yeah. um, on the street. But um, <clears throat> another important element is that um, whilst uh, documents tend to be voluminous, you also need to provide a, an executive summary of whatever it yeah. is that you are, yeah. you know, disseminating to yeah. people. But also in uh, our areas, you would find that the manner in which information reaches the citizenry should be, uh, if this information goes to, say, schools where those, uh, the children, because in empowering the citizenry, you Can empower learn. them from a particular yeah. um, level so that when there are these engagements, because yeah. as uh, participatory as our democracy is in South Africa, where even the sub-national uh, governments, they go all out to actually talk to the citizens before the, their budgets, there is the, what we call the integrated development uh, uh, plans that are put together that informs the budgeting process itself. That should also involve um, 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 uh, donor aid. And um, <coughs> once that is done, we must produce those documents timelessly also in order for people to get an opportunity to engage with those documents, yeah. as my colleague has yeah. said, so that it, it, the engagement is meaningful. It's yeah. not just engaging for the sake of engaging, yeah. but engaging in order to, to be able to make a, a difference. And for people also, as um, our people would always say, nothing, nothing about us without us. Yeah. You know, make sure yeah. that we have yeah. been part of it from the beginning, but also at the end of the day, then you account. Um, and that means <coughs> we need to plan properly, allow Absolutely. a lot of lead time to understand, Absolutely. to learn, to teach, to share, and yes. to debate. And, to debate, and yeah. that obviously is also one of the value, I think, one of the values of the Development Cooperation Forum, where Absolutely. internationally 
we look at shared practice. Allow me to, to segue into the, the next question for Francesco Di Simone of Transparency International. Uh, Transparency International is renowned. Whenever it publishes a report, I think it, uh, it hits the headlines, it gets reviewed, and uh, definitely I think the honorable, uh, the excellencies here also will always take, uh, take it into account. Now, uh, Transparency International has, uh, has led on a number of transparency initiatives, including the International Aid Transparency Standard. Now, looking at common standards on transparency is a tough political debate, often sensitive. It also means building consensus internationally amongst very different constituencies and stakeholders. And we see that despite the potential, we have not yet reached, I think, critical mass, so to speak, of signatories who've all adopted the different standards that you've provided. What are the incentives, you would say, and what can we here in our, in our little group also do to encourage a greater signing up, what are the constraints, but also what do you see as the, as the tremendous benefits? And I think their excellencies have already pointed to that. Absolutely. If you could do that in a few minutes. Sure, Thank you. Sure, uh, Thank you very much. Uh, well, I think at the level of the International Aid Transparency Initiative, what you start seeing is really uh, a tipping point, I think. There's uh, currently, I think, uh, countries representing about 70% of global aid flows uh, have signed on to the IATI, to the International Aid Transparency Initiative. Yeah. And I think that is a significant incentive, not only for countries that are not signed on, uh, but for those that have signed on to actually implement their, uh, their commitments. And I think at the aid transparency level, the pressure comes a lot from the countries. Uh, the idea of having uh, aid fully transparent uh, really helps, I think, countries better plan their, uh, their budgets. And uh, I think in recent years, we've seen the emergence of a lot of new uh, donors and having a full picture of what um, aid flows uh, look like in each country I think really helps uh, allocate resources efficiently. Um, at the country level, you're right, uh, on many standards uh, we have not reached the level we would like to see yet. Uh, I think the Open Budget Index for 2010 kind of shows that. Uh, but there's also a lot of improvements. Um, I think the incentives here come from, from two sides. At the, at the country level, from some civil society pressure, which certainly has been one of the uh, determining factors. Uh, internationally, also from, from the donors. Uh, if you look at what uh, President Zelik of the World Bank declared last year uh, in April, that the bank is not going to uh, provide budget support to countries that do not publish their budgets, uh, I think that's the directions where we would like to uh, see things going. Um, I really think at the, at the budget level, it is important to recognize, well, and you will see this process, I think, uh, move forward as a lot of the donors are adopting new uh, aid modalities that require, require countries to do more. Uh, but as countries do more, I think that comes with, uh, or we expect that that will come with increased transparency uh, requirements. Um, ultimately, I think at the budget level, what you want to see is more country ownership uh, of development projects. But you want country ownership not to be uh, ownership by the executive, but also ownership by the people, which means uh, the parliament and also civil society. Thank you very much. I think we've had a very rich panel, a short one. I'm also delighted that we're doing this via webcam, which I think is a practical source of opening up the debate. What I take away, and if I may, on, on our collective behalf, <coughs> is very much needing to support country level ownership through capacity building of the tools, the instruments, have an open political debate as to what works for the recipient countries. So we enable them to bring it back to citizens, but also link it back to what is internationally acceptable, build new standards, and then collectively hold one another to account. But the enabling factor, I think, through empowerment, capacity development, and then publish what you fund, so to speak, be clear and open and honest about it. We also, I think, build continued support for international development cooperation, which is equally important at a time of, of global fiscal constraints, where a lot of questions are asked about value and impact. But I think all these countries, Malawi and South Africa, are showing in their own different way their strong leadership and commitment. And we're here with you also to do a lot more and hopefully lead the way in a very modest way. Thank you very much for your time this morning. Please. Are actually the leaders in the Open Budget Index. Yeah. We have led it in yeah. two years in succession. Yeah. Um, we held uh, the sec second position in the previous year and the first position in the uh, past year. So and, uh, but we cannot be complacent, we still need to do more yeah. because it is in the interest yeah. of our yeah. 
citizens. Yeah. And this is an excellent example of South-South cooperation being extremely important and allowing other countries to look at South Africa to say what has happened there, we can adopt and can take on. Would you like to make a last comment? We have yes, less than I, a minute. I, I, I think it is uh, uh, important to underscore this uh, our concept of transparency because uh, transparency actually because it involves uh, uh, putting everybody in the picture yes. uh, in the country. Yep. Uh, it is actually that that consequently becomes a catch on the authorities because uh, the authorities now know that all the eyes are on them yep. and if they divert some resources or for some other things, they would be caught. So Absolutely. I think it is important uh, that uh, transparency should be looked at as, as a disincentive to corruption. To corruption. Thank Fantastic. You. Well, yeah. thank you very much. I think very strong concluding statements. Thank you very much for that. And uh, I'm, we, we wish the audience uh, a very good continuation of the day and the debate. Thank you.